Hi, I'm the Morlander and this is Morlander EDC. Today looking at another cross body bag. Now this is, <laughs> this is what I consider to be a bit of a, a kind of an ad hoc cross body bag. So what we're looking at today is, so this is from Tasmanian Tiger and this is the TAC Pouch 8.1 HIP. If you've already got the Tasmanian Tack Pouch 8.1, then you'll probably know this. Because what they've done is, specifically from feedback from people that like the Tack Pouch 8.1, people go, do you know what, this would make an awesome, this would make an amazing hip pack. If you were just to add a belt to this, these would sell like hotcakes. Tack Pouch 8.1 and a belt. And this is essentially how this how this whole thing came about. And I definitely will say, genius idea. There are more, or at least there should be more companies out there that have these sized um, Molly compatible pals webbing um, pouches that should do a variant where they simply just add um, add a waist belt to it. So that's what we're going to have a look at today. Now as we usually do, we'll go into some measurements, we'll have a look at the materials and then we'll have a look around this pouch, hip belt collaboration. As far as the uh, measurements are concerned, so this comes in at 26 centimeters by 16 centimeters by 6 centimeters deep, which is roughly about 3 liters. So this is a good size. You can fit quite a lot in here. But really this is designed more for your essentials when you're out and about like this in the woods or whether you're on a city break and want to take something to keep your valuables with you. And I think that's where the Tack Pouch 8.1 really kind of fits in because it's, it's just that perfect size for all of those things that I just described. As far as the materials on here is concerned, so this is made from Cordura. Um, Tasmanian Tiger opt for a bit of a middle ground, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit spicy different when it comes to their Cordura. Rather than going for a lighter weight 500D or going for the heavyweight 1000D, they go for a 700. The beauty of the 700 is it's not as heavy as the 1000, it's probably closer. There's very little difference. Well, I suppose there is a difference, um, but it, it, it's weight wise is probably closer to the 500, but because it's closer to the 1000D, um, then you get a bit more abrasion resistance and a lot of those other features that you get with the 1000. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bit of a Goldilocks um, one, you know, not too heavy, not too, not too light, not too tough, not too weak, you know, it, it's just right. Um, available in several colours, so I think with Tasmanian Tiger you've got uh, you've got your coyote. There's black. There is the um, there's the uh, OD green version. This is the grey version, and there is also I believe a multicam version as well. All of the zippers on here are the YKK zippers, and they're all of the new. Um, uh, RC YKK zippers. They're also reverse coiled, reverse stitched on here as well. So they all look really nice and low key, which I think is great as well. Um, all of the buckles, all of the hardware on here are Wujin buckles. I really do like, I know people, oh, I, I much prefer Jura Flex. I've had no issues whatsoever with Wujin buckles. Um, Tasmanian Tiger have used Wujin buckles for as long as I've been working with them. That's about six years now. And yeah, not had any issues with their hardware whatsoever. Um, you've got a little bit of uh, hook and loop here in the front and then you have your Tasmanian Tiger logo. So going around the pouch itself, Starting on the bottom here, you do have some elastic loops. So if you have, now I will say, so the elastic loop on here, rather than it just being one large elastic loop that you might be able to pass a tourniquet through, there, there is, there is a, a stitching point here. So it's more kind of chem light, more walking, trekking poles that you might be able to get through here. I think if they were to take that stitch off, then you could easily be able to pass a, um, 
a, a, a tourniquet through here but I'm guessing with this they, they didn't have that in mind they wanted more for, for a kind of a tools chem light use but that, that I think that would be nice if there's anything that I would change I would probably just take that stitch off but that, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, then on the front here, so there is a, a, a reasonably plain clear panel on here, apart from the, um, the hook and loop here. So if you have some morale patches or something that you want to put on here, then you can do. Now I'll say one of the things about this is it's reasonably low key in the fact that down here on the left and on the right, you have this really nice daisy chaining. So if you did want to attach some bungee cord, which does come with this, it's, it's in the inside, I just haven't attached it. But if you did want to run some bungee cord through here, you can do that. So if you've got snacks, if you've got maybe a, a lightweight jacket or you've got a shirt that you can take off that which will which you can just fit on the front here then you can put it within that bungee cord so I really like this because it's it's just, it's just a little bit low-key it doesn't scream military like certain uh, like pals webbing can do on the front uh, just at the top of the front panel here you then have one of the two compartments that are on here so I'm calling this really your your, your quick access panel so if you've got keys um, well yeah whatever you want to put in here um, I can show you <laughs> so I mean I do I do have my keys in here uh, but I also have because I use this a lot whilst I'm walking the dogs in the woods at night um, I also have um, my poo bags which are great because Let's face it, one of the joys is also picking up other people's rubbish because they do leave it in here. Uh, but so this does go so uh, across the bottom seam here and this seam here, and also underneath this flap. So the full 26 centimeters by 16 centimeters is, is the full volume of this. Um, it is reasonably flat though, as you'd expect with one of these on the front. So I think the full three liters. You might have say two and a half liters in in the main section and maybe say half a liter here in the front uh, but again great for just getting quick access to simple things that you want to have here on the front with your zipper it's not it wasn't getting stuck i, I was pulling the wrong thing anyway uh, the zippers are buttery smooth i mean that was that was perfectly timed for me to not be able to use it myself now, as far as the main compartment is opened, uh, I do like the fact that this has double zips, so whether you're lefty and want to pull to the right or, you know, in the opposite direction, you can do that. Or, if you want to and you want to just hold this and pull it open, it will splay open with ease because of how smooth these zips are. Now, it's not, and I'm just making sure I pull these down, it's not a full clamshell opening, but it's very close to it. So rather than going all the way underneath here, it probably stops maybe, say, 10 mil, what's that, that's a, that's a third of an inch uh, from the bottom. So if you do have heavy things in here at the front, it does kind of stop it from just going bleh and everything completely falling out. But I did mention, so in the front here, you do, you are given some bungee cord on the inside. If I just do this back up again, on the inside, you do have some bungee tabs. There are some here at the top and there are some here at the side. And then on this front flap here, there are also uh, corresponding um, tabs here as well so that you can you can bungee cord this again if you know that you've got something in the front you don't want it just to completely fall or open out you can use this bungee cord to limit just how open this gets um, should you need to I'm just going to put that back in for a second now on the inside here what I'm going to do is I should do this with more packs I don't I don't even know why I don't do this with more packs because it's such a great way of being able to show it off so I just have my uh, little pack here that I keep my uh, camera batteries in. Now this is so this is that that front bit where where that where the zipper is and the, and the hook and loop would are on here. Uh, you have a large mesh pocket which is which is the whole section on here. It does come down all of the way to where the stitching is here, and the same same as again it comes all the way up to the top. So this is that whole um, 26 by 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 16. So if you want to, you can put tools in here, you can put whatever in here, mainly with that, with that mesh, being able to see into it from the outside, it makes it very easy. Uh, and then the zip on here at the top to close that up. 
you also then have some uh, some elastic loops on here so if you have some tools um, or anything like that that you want to be able to slot into these if you want to use this for CCW of course you can do have a look at the back as well in a second uh, but you can put uh, mag you can put nine millimeter magazines uh, into here for the pew pew that you keep as well uh, but plenty of options on this front panel uh, with this uh, elastic uh, webbing that you have here then on the back so this would be if I was if I was wearing this so if this if this was on this would be the bit that's the, that, that's here against me uh, you have hook and loop all the way through this so at the moment I have one of these, um, this is from Helicon Text, this is part of their versatile inserts range, but there's quite a few of these from holsters, from uh, magazine the slots, this is more of an admin panel where you can put uh, tools and, and pens into it. This will, this will hook onto the back here with the hook and loop. Rather than this just being a flat hook and loop panel, if I bring this a little bit closer here, hopefully you can see that this also has laser cut PALS slots into here. So whether you have a hook and loop holster that you can attach to this, or you have a holster that uses that, that has a uh, that has a molly attachment to this, so you can attach to a belt. Uh, this will attach to here, so you have a little bit more options. If, for example, you don't have a hook and loop holster, you can fit in uh, one of the molly pals webbing attachments to this. It is quite a large slot on here. Um, I mean, I don't have it with me. I have a, dub, uh, have a dummy uh, Glock 17 which will fit on this. I have a gl dummy Glock 19X as well. That will fit onto it a lot easier because it, it's, it's smaller than the 17. Uh, but it will fit in there. It's a bit of a squeeze. Your compacts and your subcompacts are a little bit better for this. If you're not in an area of the world where you can use CCW and you maybe have some other pouches, you can fit your other pouches onto here which again will give you a lot more modularity in what you can carry and the ways that you can carry it as well. Now as I'm putting this back, as you will expect with Tasmanian Tiger, um, their attention to detail and quality is absolutely amazing. All of the stitching in here is, is, is perfect. All of the hardware areas, it, it's completely reinforced as well. Um, with the 700D Cordura on this, this is a crossbody bag that is designed to last as long as possible and to go pretty much through whatever you can push it through. Now on the back here, when I turn this over, here is where you can see more where the, the TAC pouch 8.1 kind of comes in because it's, it's pretty much identical to that in the fact that you have four columns with yeah, sorry, four columns, and then you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, rows of um, laser cut PALS webbing on there, so this can attach to other packs. Specifically, the survivor pack. So this will fit on the survivor pack because it has a survivor pack. So it has these two loops here at the top that you can also use with these. Uh, but where that has the G hooks on there, that's what these will attach to as well. So these work very well um, in tandem with each other. But if you have a PALS webbing panel that you want to attach this to, then it will go on there. Now it uses, so the it's like a hypalon material. I'm not sure what it is. Let's just say for now it is a hypalon material. Um, but here, here are your straps so that you can pass these through. But if it is that you don't want to use these, these will come out like so. And then here at the top, it also comes out. So it uses this take this off for a second. So here's the strap and it has this T-bar at the top so that will stop it from coming down. You pass this through the, the PALS webbing and then loop it back on itself to lock that in, into position. Um, but again if you want to have this super low key so that it doesn't rub against you then you can take uh, you can take these straps off. Now in my haste to close off the video I just realized that there's another feature on here that I completely forgot to mention and that is that there is a pass-through here. 
on on this side and on this side you can there is a pass through which is great if you want to have this on your chest if you pass a sternum strap through here you can certainly do that uh, but mainly this is designed so that if you have a 50 millimeter or a two inch waist belt you can put this all the way through here and you can have this on your hip part of maybe a battle belt setup or even on the back if you want to uh, you can have that on here as well uh, but where the where the Cordura is on the back, there is a cutout section just here, and another cutout section just here, where that will fit through. Now, as far as carrying is concerned, carrying is as you'd expect for a crossbody bag like this, with a little bit more options for you. So, because this is designed as a hip pack. You have one here, let's say, coming off at three o'clock and one coming off at nine o'clock. If you want to wear this more as a cross body bag, which is how I do, and I'll put it back to how I have them. So you have these, I don't even know what these are called. I'm, I call, well, I call them thumb destroyers because they do generally tend to. Um, so it's one of these kind of compression ones. You have to pinch that down and then there's a gate that pushes over that. So when it's on, how I usually have it is like so, although I've put that on the wrong way around. Uh, so I have mine, so one comes off uh, at 90 degrees or kind of, I suppose, horizontally, and one comes off vertically so that when I have it on, especially when it's on the front here, I'm just making sure I'm not turning back down on my car keys, I probably shouldn't have put them on the floor. Um, it sits just right because this one comes underneath my armpit and this one goes over my shoulder. What I also find is if I move this round through to underneath my armpit is that it sits again just right that this comes up, up across my chest. Let's turn that round for a second. This comes up around across my chest, whereas the other one around the back comes off laterally to go around my back as well. So, so there's plenty of options with this. Now I know a lot of you do like to know how long the, um, what's it goes. I'll leave the exact measurement here, uh, but just to show you on me, so I'm just fiddling with that. Why do I do these things to myself on camera? But at the longest, it's the bottom of it is just above my belly button. Um, and then on the side, generally I don't tend to have it that close or at least that low down. I do prefer to have it just a little bit further up. Now on here, you do have a D-ring, which does stop it from slipping, although I've just pulled it through there for a second. So it does stop it from slipping, which I do like about this. Once you've got it in the position that you want it, um, it does a very good um, job at keeping the, the strap in position although like I say this is the beauty of doing stuff on camera you always mess things up but then what you also have is you have a little piece of uh, elastic on there as well I've pulled mine over here mainly because when I first got this the, sh the elastic was on the opposite side of this buckle so it sat like that so that stops a bit of Kind of flapping around for me i've pulled it on that side and then pulled this d ring down here uh, so that it just holds it in place a little bit better uh, but again you know when it's on it's on and it fits great just the last little bit i do tend to talk about this quite a bit when i do these style bags but i certainly think that it's useful to discuss and that is that these are worth their weight in gold when it comes for city breaks and not having stuff took off you. I talk about it a lot, but situational awareness is key and knowing who's around you and who's trying to get at your valuables. When you wear a pack on the front like this, somebody has to get into this area to be able to get into here, which certainly makes it harder for them. Also wearing this underneath your arm like this, there is an arm that's swinging around which will be a deterrent as well. Another beauty of these is because they are so slim, it means that if you want to, maybe it's the winter and you have like a, a, a quite a large jacket, you can wear this underneath your jacket so it's a little bit harder to see. Great again for not having valuables took from you and also if this is being used for CCW, you can just slide it out of the way so that it's a little bit harder to see. The last 
bit which I think is just as valuable as the others is the fact that you can keep this on you whilst driving. Being able to sit in your vehicle, have your seat belt, it will either fit just over the top of this, so if you want to pull it up just a little bit more, it'll fit just underneath here. But it means that if you're trying to get out of a vehicle, you can pull it over, it won't snag on this, you can get out of your vehicle. If you need to use something that's in here then you can do or it might just simply be that you live in a country where I don't know maybe carjacking or there are just certain issues that if you need to get out of your vehicle quickly with your valuables and your essentials having something like this on you means that you can do that as well. So there you go, Just I always like to add that actual, uh, actual little bit onto the end because I, I, I do think that it's something that we overthink when, or at least we don't think about when we're looking at these and it's certainly something that's very useful to think about if it's something that you need to consider getting out of vehicles or you have things that are took from you or again for, uh, for CCW. So there you go. The beautiful marriage of somebody going, wow, I really like that tack pouch 8.1. It's a shame that you don't do one with um, with a belt on here. And somebody going, maybe we should put a belt on there. That was my Russian, no, sorry, that was my that was my German accent for the day. Did you, did you like that? It was, it was shockingly bad. So I, I apologize to all my German friends out there. Um, but yeah, somebody just went, you, you know, maybe we should do that. And they did, and it's come out with this, and it works. It really does work. So many other com companies should be doing something similar to this if they're not doing already. Um, now, I do need to state at this point, I want to say a huge thank you for Tasmanian Tiger for sending this to me. I have been um, a UK ambassador for Tasmanian Tiger now for the last nearly six years. I have an awesome relationship with them, but that means that if I didn't like this, well, I mean, if I didn't like this, I wouldn't be making any content on it. Um, but they do allow me to give my true opinions on this. Like, I mean, as I mentioned, but if I was to change anything, I would have probably just change that. Um, so I, I did want to disclose that at this point, but again, so it's, it's no reflection on the content that's been made today. Um, so I will leave some links below so that you can see more from Tasmanian Tiger and where you can pick one of these up from. I'll also leave some of my social media links here on Moreland EDC and also my sister channel, Moreland Tactical. And whether you're watching this on YouTube or Rumble, as always, stay safe, stay Moorlander and stay EDC. Can't believe I said Russian instead of German. So anyway, I'm not even sure what day this is going out. It might be going, well, maybe, maybe I should do a big extravaganza and put out. Now in my haste, I've just remembered there is another feature on the back here. I'll hurry up Mr. Plane. No, it's a helicopter. Anyway. Anyway, whatever day it is, I hope you're all having an amazing day.